When I was a kid, my parents would buy me the like spiral bound grocery store paper and like those ballpoint pens that maybe cost like $2 for like 12 or something. My relationship with writing pen and paper, uh, I didn't like it. Now to my parents credit, they did buy me a computer and I had a keyboard and mouse in hand from a young age, grew up on the internet, very grateful for that. But later in life, as I got into my adult years, and discover that there were actually good pens and good paper, which will be another video. I discovered I actually liked writing and journaling and putting entries into my paper journals every day or as many days as I possibly could. And writing to just even think and think through things and just process information. We do, in fact, live in the information age. There's a lot to process. All that being said, welcome back to another video. My name is Stephen Foster, and today we are talking about pens. In my opinion, the best EDC pens, or at least the pens that when I started this journey, I think now, oh, let's see. I think I've been sort of on this journey of trying to find better paper and pens and find the right tool for the job, something that feels good to use, but isn't necessarily like, a thousand dollar fountain pen. These pens are all very affordable, comparatively speaking, um, and very accessible, I find. Uh, you can go out and buy one of these pens, have it shipped to you in a couple days. Uh, it is actually incredible the time that we live in today, how uh, the machining and the, the metal technology that's going into each one of these, and then the refills that you can put inside of them, which we'll talk a little bit about in this video. Um, how accessible all of that has become. So while this list is not fully inclusive of every great pen, every great EDC pen, these are the three pens that through trial and error, picking up many pens now over the last decade, for my price point, somewhere between 50 and $100 US, I think these are the three pins that you should look out for. So let's get into it. The first pin that I purchased sort of in this category, in this realm, was the Baron Fig Squire. This pin is all metal construction, or at least the exterior is all metal. You'll find that with all three of these pins, and it just feels so good. This particular pin has this tapering where it gets a little bit thicker towards the tip, and that just makes it really easy to grip and hold. If you, if you look at the profile on this pen, it is so sleek. It is just such a, a minimalist's dream. Um, you do have the Squire logo, which is this uh, sword. The uh, the pen is a mighty sword, I believe, is what Baron Fig says of their Squire. Uh, it does have the Baron Fig branding on it. I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it would have been cool if they just left it to the uh, just left it to the sword. But again, it's very minimal. You deploy the roller ball up front here by twisting the top cap here. So. There's no like external action happening here. And while I'm not gonna dive into refills on this particular video, uh, this is the pin that first introduced me to the P8126 refill, which has become my most favorite refill of rollerball technology. That was a big thing to learn was that ball points and rollerballs are two very different things. And um, the P8126 is, is the rollerball of my of my choosing. So I have a lot of fond memories of this pin, using this pin. I don't use it that much anymore. Um, Baron Fig makes this in a bunch of different colors. I think the black is the best one. There is though, or there was, I should say. Let's see, do I even have it right here? I do. There was a stainless steel version of this pin and I forgot how I even got this, but I just, I loved the stainless steel version of this as well. A little bit weighty, so you wouldn't want to be doing like a, a long-term uh, journaling sesh with it, but to jot something down with was just so cool to have and it just looks really good on the desk. But I think for everyday use, the uh, the all black aluminum is really a really nice choice. And I gotta give a shout out to Sean Blanc who is behind the Focus Course and I think a few other great websites, Sweet Setup, Tools and Toys. That dude uh, was the guy who I think got me into, actually yeah, Sean was the guy who got me into Baron Fig uh, their Confidant notebooks, which has been my go-to notebook. You can actually see it right up there. I have a stack of about a dozen of them that I've gone through. One of my favorite notebooks of all time, uh, Baron Fig. I think that is a great choice if you're looking for your first sort of uh, upgrade EDC journaling, daily journaling kind of pen. Now, the second pen that we're going to go over today is the Mark One, the Studio Neat Mark One. I've been following Studio Neat for, oh shoot, 
years, maybe a decade now, um, when they came out with their glyph. Everything comes back to photography somehow. It's great. But as you guys know, this channel, I usually do a lot more photography, but right now my leg is still busted. And so we're learning how to do some photography and imagery in here in the studio. But that's also why I want to dive into some of these things as well while I'm not as mobile. Still, Studio Neat was one of those companies that they made the Glyph, which was this awesome mobile photography product. And I knew when they were announcing a pen that I, I wanted to get behind that Kickstarter. I wanted to see what this product was going to look like. Again, it supports that P8126 refill. Uh, it has a nickel or copper knock in order to click. Oh, that click is so satisfying. Here, let's just. Um, the machining and like the material of this pen is just so nice. You just refill it by twisting the top off. Uh, it goes right back on nice and easy. Fits a ton of refills, but again, that P8126 is perfect, uh, in my opinion, at least. All metal construction, it's an aluminum Cerakote barrel. Uh, like I said, with that copper or nickel knock on top. I, I really love the color combinations that Studio Need did with this particular pen and some of their limited drops that they've done with this pen, I feel like they look a lot better, or at least they're more my style than something like the Baron Fig, where I'm not a huge fan of all the colors that they've done, um, but Studio Neat's uh, material choice and the way that they've presented those material choices in the color offerings that they have, and the color combinations that they have are really great. A significantly lighter pen, if you hold uh, any of these three pins, uh, even though they all have metal bodies, the Studio Neat Mark One is a very light pin. This is probably my favorite pin to go to if I'm gonna be journaling about something, if I'm processing something, or I know I'm gonna fill up a couple pages. This is the pin I reach for. It just, it glides, it's so easy to use, it fits just perfectly in the hand. Can't say enough good things about it. I wish I actually I was able to pick up some of the limited editions of this pin because I do like it so much. I keep a spare in, in the office here at all times. But with that, the Mark I pin, I don't think can go wrong. Makes a great gift too. I think um, I think it's, it's one of the great things about pins, watches, things like that. Finally, we're gonna dive into this pin. This is the latest edition. I think this joined the crew here in about, uh, well, let's see. I think the Baron Fig Squire, I picked up some around 2015, 2016. The Studio Neat Mark I came around, I believe 2018 is when that Kickstarter uh, went live and fulfilled. But this is the Big Idea Design Bolt Action Pin. Oh man, and I have it, of course, in the Pete's Pirate Life Edition, the Zirconium Pete's Pirate Life Edition. I think I picked this up, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so. I'll say this, I've never felt what a Zirconium pin feels like. Um, they do make this in a titanium version as well, which is the more affordable option, more accessible option, I think, for most people, and probably the pin most people should get. If I were buying one out and out today, I would definitely buy that particular pin, but I had the opportunity to get the Pirate Zerk pin. The graphite finish, I do wish, was just a little bit darker. I do really like that black look. Um, it looks like there's some brass where the bolt action uh, sits. And then uh, you have this clip on here as well. So this is like a really true and tried EDC pin where you're gonna have a clip, you have a really sturdy bolt to make sure that it doesn't accidentally deploy. And then there's like a little hex uh, bolt up top in order to uh, access that bolt action mechanism. This is the pin that ends up going with me on the daily uh, places. This is what I pair with, let's see if I, I think I got it right here. This is the pen that I pair with my Field Notes notebook. These two come with me at all times, anytime I'm out and about. It's so wild how many times I end up finding uh, that I'm really stoked that I ended up bringing pen and paper with me, whether it's just to jot down something, like information from someone that they're sharing with me or from out at the range and I wanna take like MOA uh, readings or something. Um, even just like going out and getting recommendations for friends on something, just really anything. I never thought I would use a field note notebook for and uh, and a pen for, but, but this pen really is like, it's the champ. It's got the clip, it's got that bold action. It, I think it meets the, the criteria of a great EDC pen and it's solid for journaling. I would more prefer the Studio Neat Mark I for journaling, but um, I do think that all around uh, at least the winner for me, the one that's getting the most exercise, even though I'm not going outside that much, uh, as you guys know with my leg. This pin is still kind of the go-to pin, at least for right 
now. But the big, ugh, the big whiff on this pen that I do, I, I can't all gush about it because this pen ships with a P, I think 950, like I checked my notes. Did this thing ship with a P950M? Yeah, this pen shipped with a P950M refill in it. I do not enjoy that refill. That refill is not, um, I, I think it's actually a sin that it was sold with a P950 refill. For this being actually the most expensive pin of the bunch and to have a refill that I think is like the least, just the least high end or quality that you could put in here, uh, maybe not the least, but it's it's uh, uh, it's not even one of those things where it's like, oh, I'll burn through this refill and then throw in a 8126. It's like, no, I immediately, I immediately, I tried. I gave this like not even a full sentence with that P950M in it and I just said, Nope, we're throwing in an 8126 in there. And this pen fits an 8126 perfectly. It is actually the shortest of all of these pens because that bolt action is encapsulated in the pen, making it even smaller, but not like a micro pen. Like Baron Fig and uh, Studio Neat both have like more, I guess, micro pens for EDCs that will take smaller refills and stuff. This is still a full size pen, but it's still smaller than most full size pens because the action, like this twist action or this click action with the knock um, is internal with the bolt. So that is, I think, a huge win for this pin. But again, if you do buy this pin, uh, go to either Studio Neat's website or Baron Fig's website and pick up some of those uh, 8126 refills and do yourself a favor and put that in this immediately and take that 950M and toss it in the trash. Now I'm curious to hear from any of you, do you have a particular pin that is a favorite of yours? Maybe even a refill that is a favorite of yours? Leave it down in the comments below and let us know why. Let us know what's up and what's good. Uh, I will say this, fountain pins, whole other different world. Uh, I love them. I don't have the dexterity or patience for them, but uh, if you're all about that, maybe one day I'll be able to do a video on fountain pins. But this is kind of more just the rollerball uh, or ballpoint, uh, rollerball, <laughs> EDC, daily journaling tools, the instruments that one would use on a daily basis to make that process enjoyable, to remove the friction from that process and make it something that you want to do every single day. Because that's what I found. I found that when I had the right tool for the job and was able to appreciate and enjoy my daily journaling practice. I did it, I, I still do do it every single day and, and all those notebooks up on the shelf are a testament um, to how important it is to have the right tool for the job and it doesn't have to be a $300, $500,000 pin. Uh, I think this 50 to $100 price range is incredible that we live in a time that uh, you can get something that's machined to these specs with this level of meticulous care we really are living in a fantastic time so with that i just want to say thank you if you made it this far in the video uh you're the best and i hope you're subscribed to this channel and if you already are i am so grateful so honored and uh, appreciate you very much please be kind both in life and in the comments below and like this video to send good vibes across the internet we'll do it again soon later What do you guys think? Fly the flag. Fly the flag. Pirate life. It's what's good. <laughs> that's that's what should have been the outro. It just should have been some pirate life, you know? <laughs>